outside first, then we'll go through everything inside. As you come through, here's your front of your trailer. Here's your storage hutch here that opens up like so. You got little support holders to hold it up like that while you're loading your stuff in and out. There's also a trolley that goes through the base here that slides both directions for bigger items. It just closes like that, and then you lock it there. The two batteries are right here. Gas tanks are right inside the cover here. valves are right here to open your tanks okay it does have an auto change regulator on here if it's in green and it's pointed this tank then it's full operating off that tank if it turns red then it switches the other tank automatically Good. all four corners have crank down stabilizer jacks Okay, this is a gas assisted strut that lifts the roof up. Here's your door. There's two locks on it. The same key does both. It's purple. One goes in here. This is just a hand lock. This is the one here that drives the deadbolt in the side. This is you have the only key for this. One in five keys have this. This is your door handle. Transports there. This is your raise and lower button. It raises and lowers the roof. There's your ground fall low light. Outside porch light. This, outside speaker. The antenna for the stereo system. This is the latch that holds the roof down during transport. <clears throat> this is a strip where your outside gas grill attaches. Your gas connection for it is right inside of here. There's also a table that attaches next to the outside gas grill. As we continue on, just another outside storage area. Nope, that one's locked. Just opens up. It just goes under the back bed here. And again, another crank down jack. They're on all four corners. You got your spare tires right here. This is a Wi Fi extender. So if there's Wi-Fi at a campground or within two miles and you have the password or it's unsecured, it will only amplify the signal and create a secured network for you. Here's that storage spot that we were talking about from the other side. It just locks in place. This is your venting for the air conditioner. This is the lift motor that actually lifts the roof up and down. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is where you uh, bring your city water connection in. So like if you're at a campground, you screw a garden hose to it, that's a nicer campground. If you're more remote campgrounds, that fills your onboard water where you must turn the water pump on and it uses the pump in the system and limits you to 30 gallons. Those are your travel covers. This is if, if you wanna bring an exterior antenna in. The other roof latch that secures the roof during transport. This is your sink drain, where your sink drains out. And then this is your outside shower. Hot and cold mixer valve, six foot of hose, and you know, locks it shut like so. These are your vents for your refrigerator. They're only for service, you should not be in those. This is the exhaust for the furnace. Uh, again, it does get warm, so do not touch it if it's operating. Another gas assist for the front part of the roof. And here's where your power cord's gonna plug in to the side of the trailer. The cord's inside, it comes with the trailer. This is the outside of the water heater. <coughs> and there again, just for service and winterization, you get in there. It's auto light, so you don't have to go in there to do anything. Oh, and then we have low point drains. All right, actually here and here. Those drain your hot and cold water lines. So if you're gonna have the trailer and not use it for more than a couple weeks, drain those out so you don't have stale water sitting in the system. Okay, 
and that should pretty much be it, except there's one more thing over here we found. This is an emergency breakaway switch, which if you look at your vehicle, if it comes uncoupled, it will automatically set the brakes, and the trailer will not roll. And that's it on the outside of the trailer. Inside of the Highball 213, and I think I'll hold this right just so that we can show them to you easier, and you'll have better access to them. This panel normally is screwed shut, but it's an access area. Here's where your air conditioner is, your vents are coming out for that. But the main thing is that's where your water pump ends, and here is your water filter is right there, okay? You will have to take that out to winterize it, and you will take it back into the screen. That goes there. We put our mattress back in place. And if you notice, <clears throat> there's two filler pieces. You can have this as two twin beds, or it'll make a giant tank size bed. We're talking about outside table that hooks on the outside of the unit next to the gas grill top. Here's the table. Here's your other filler piece that's going to go in play here. Drops right in place here. Outside, uh, inside speaker. These are your comforters that go on there. And here is your water filter and the wrench for the water filter. Here's also a book that, book bag that comes with the unit. It has all the paperwork on all the items, you know, all the warranty cards and everything on every item that's in the trailer, along with the remote for the stereo system. Now, as we proceed, this is the controls for the heating and cooling. You turn it on, and then we second mode. Cool is going to be the air conditioner, and your temperatures go up and down. No. Then, furnace with the heat waves. Heat pump, that's running the reverse sequence on the air conditioner. The heat pump only works to 40 degrees, so if you're out colder than that, you must use the furnace. The heat pump only runs on 110. It does not run on battery or LP gas. If you don't have 110, you have to go to the furnace mode again, like so. If you only have gas, no 110 power. This is just a little aisle marker light, inside lights. You can see a little night light that lights the area up so you're not tripping. Now, we we're talking about that Wi-Fi extender, okay? There's your coding for it to operate. Here's your stereo system, okay? It's step-by-step -step guide how to walk you through it. And that yeah, one's right there. We'll shut that <laughs> off before we go crazy. But it does allow you to stream music back and forth through it. You got inside, outside speakers, and a cheat sheet's right here for it. So you don't have to listen that much on that. Now, one of the most problem areas is the sink. Because people don't always understand it. This is hot and cold water, okay? But your volume is determined by this. The further you go out, the more volume you have. And you can see it's blue, and as you go up, it goes. Okay, that's the biggest issue that people have there. Now, on your stove top, you turn this, and you go to the high setting. And you turn your spark button on like that, that'll light it. Hold it for 30 seconds, turn it wherever you'd like to. Okay, this just flips down. You cannot operate this. You can't have that folded down while the stove is operational. Now your refrigerator. Here's your refrigerator. Start with, you turn it on. Okay, then you have to either check auto or you can go to DC or gas, okay? If you put it on auto, it goes from 110 to gas to 12 volt. Now, if this little light here that's green right now because it's running on gas, if it turns red, it is not operating. That tells you it faults out and you must turn the tanks on probably. This is a temperature selector, 
okay the higher the number the colder the refrigerator will go this is your travel lock so that the door doesn't slide open you must push that up and then the door will open and come out your freezer operates like so they're the same temperature regulator on both now as we progress down the trailer this is your furnace it's automatic ignition right off the panel we turned it on over there before your air blows directly out here so it makes about 40 to 50 degree temperature difference this is a ground fault outlet with a reset button right here okay now this is your hot water heater you light your hot water heater by flipping that switch when it's lit the red light goes off to tell you that it's operating if it isn't going off you have to shut it off wait 30 seconds turn it back on to recycle it okay like you see the light just went off it's operating in mold this is your lp gas detector it senses lp gas carbon monoxide it is also a low voltage sensor if your battery gets too low it will start to chirp also now this is your power center for the whole trailer this is all your 110 circuit breakers for all your 110 outlets This are all your 12 volt fuses for all your lights, water pumps, stereo system, and everything's labeled right accordingly. We'll close that up there. Now, under the seat box here, that's your water heater. You won't have to get in that during the season, but there's two valves on that. You will turn when it comes time to winterize it. So for now, we're not going to worry about anything in this compartment. We're going to close back up till come that time of year. Because they do have winterization seminars that will teach you how to do it yourself. It's very simple. Now, as we keep going, there's a table that flips up right here. To give you extra counter space. And then you just break these two arms there, and it folds right down like so. We'll put this area back together. I just took it apart so you can see better. Cushions have Velcro at the top. And there's a strip here that matches the wall to hold them in place. This is your table. Pops right up. Or if you're going to make this into a bed, it just sets right down on those areas. And again, then you're just going to push these down. You got a single bed here. Here's your bathroom, your toilet. This lifts up. Okay. More paperwork here. This valve here opens for your waste to go in. That flushes your water by pushing a blue lever. Now we'll go to the outside and we'll open the trailer compartment there and show you how the tank comes out that you go and dump the waste out of. you push up and the whole tank assembly here comes out it's got a set of wheels on it and you can take and there's a handle here so you can roll it along if you don't want to carry the 10 pounds and then when you get to the dump station there's a cap that's sitting inside that comes with it in that paper bag that you unscrew and you can dump that in any area dump station toilet that you want to and then put it back in, just get right there, locks in place, and you're all set to go. Now we're going to go through how the trail, apron trailer goes up and down. First, you undo these latches because this unit's got a dormer on it. Those come loose, and we just lift that up. And again, it's got gas assist on it, it goes right up for us. Now we're going to go inside. We'll see how the panels lock in from there. Okay, pause it. Okay, so now we continue putting the dormer up. That goes forward. This panel goes up and locks in place. 
This bale goes up, locks in place, and then you take this strap that's right here, pull that down, hooks right in like that, and that locks the dormer in place. It's all set to go. So now we're just going to take it all in reverse to put this all down. We're going to release this. Take that down. Take this down. And now we're just going to grab this, bring it back down. Now we're going to drop the rest of the walls down because it's easier to fold the dormer down once all the way down because it lifted it up on us. Also, while we're in here, we missed one thing. We have a coat rack that's built into the ceiling right here. And the fan. And then there's also a fan right here. You have to undo this lock, open the fan, and then you have three speed settings at which you can put it on. And then we just close it and lock it for transport. Okay. So we're going to undo the latches. So first one here, we'll undo that because once you let this panel down, you can't get at that one. So now we're going to undo this one. We're going to undo this one. And now this panel has nothing supporting it but you. Down it comes. We're going to do the same thing with this last latch here. The difference is the door's on this side. You must release this catch here, bring the door to center, and bring it down like so. And you're done with that. Now, when you put it up, it's very critical that this lower door is locked when you lift this up in the place, because otherwise, you can damage yourself with extrusion. But when you're coming down, it doesn't have to be. And we set that down. Step through, let's make that catch here. And your extender and track button. So we're going to retract. transport wax we were talking about before. Latch. And there's a spot to put a paddle lock through. Now you can see how this is realistic to grab a hold of the handle and bring the dormer down. And do the latches here. This is your jack. It's going to raise it up and down. This is your seven-way plug. It's going to plug into your trailer. So you need a seven-way uh, outlet on your vehicle. It's got a little holder here. This latches by just snapping this over on the ball. That the release is the trigger at the top because it releases this lock pin that locks in that plate there. This unit that's getting picked up is getting a sway plate added to it. So you got a sway bar. So this ball is going to be center. And then your sway control puts onto the ball here and the ball there. It just helps travel down the road, give you a little smoother travels. And that should be it.